Go back to the graphic here that just speaks to where things are this hour. 100 seats in the Senate right now, 48 Democrats, 48 Republicans confirmed. Those final results still to come in from Arizona, Nevada, Wisconsin, and Georgia. Here are the latest results for the House. Associated Press declaring 199 Republicans elected, 172 Democrats. There are 435 seats up for election in the House, so a party needs 218 to have the majority. And there's been no, no change in that this morning. No other state declared one way or the other in the Senate or the House so far as we've been on the air today. So that's where things stand, with Congress and control of Congress very much undecided. Let's bring some clarity to the picture. We do so with the help of our Washington correspondent, Alexander Panetta, who's live in our Washington bureau. He's been working around the clock on all sorts of very thoughtful analysis pieces on the U.S. midterms. Good morning, Alex. Great to see you, as always. Hi, Heather. Overall this morning, as I look at your piece, um, an unexpected Joe Biden smile, maybe if we can bin right there. Why don't we, how, do, how are the Democrats going to be interpreting the results so far? So, uh, look, uh, Heather, I presume you're a better driver than me, but I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you, you bump into something and you think, oh, this is going to be terrible. You get ready to look outside the car and, and you're checking for total damage, uh, you know, a, a horrible crunching uh, shapes, and all you see is a little dent, a little thing that basically makes you say, yeah, could be worse, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take this. And this is basically the situation uh, Democrats find themselves in. If you had told Joe Biden two years ago, you're probably going to lose control of the House of Representatives by a few seats. Uh, you may or may not win the Senate. It's going to be a, a, a coin flip. He'd probably have said, oh, that's, that's, that's too bad. But if you would have added to that um, uh, nearly double-digit inflation, um, the fact that the stability Americans have been craving for two, uh, two or years or more has not arrived, not, neither in the economy or in politics, and you still barely um, lose. You almost basically hold on to, uh, to both chambers of Congress. Uh, you know, Democrats would have said, I will take this. And an Im important context for that is that the United States House of Representatives tends to, uh, you know, well, voters tend to punish uh, the incumbent party, uh, stripping it of usually about two dozen or more seats in the House of Representatives. It's looking like Democrats might only lose a few, despite the inflation, despite all the things we just mentioned. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a tough couple of years for Joe Biden if they lose the House. They're going to investigate his son, his son's business dealings, his family's business. Uh, they're going to investigate uh, administration officials. They're going to investigate the investigation into Donald Trump at the FBI. It's going to be a hostile Congress, potentially. But like I said, it could have been a lot worse. To quote Rain Man, I am a very good, I'm a very good driver. But anyway, uh, back to that analogy. So it could have been a lot worse for the Democrats. But the Republicans who were going into this anticipating, I mean, Lindsey Graham said so last night, a red wave. That did not materialize. And even though uh, wannabe uh, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy was saying, really putting a positive spin on things as he spoke overnight, that didn't happen for them. And many people have said, you know, if they're ever going to take control and do so decisively, this would have been the moment to do so. Why didn't that happen as you see it, Alex? Yeah, uh, a couple of reasons. You know, the old the old saying in politics, which Joe Biden's fond of quoting, is, you know, don't compare me to the almighty, compare me to the alternative. And, and I think voters uh, across the country we're not, are definitely not pleased with the, with the direction of the country. Uh, it, uh, it's a record low number of Americans are satisfied with the state of affairs. Uh, and you add to that, like I said, inflation. Uh, that would usually spell disaster for the, uh, for the governing party. I mean, Bill Clinton lost, I think, 63 seats in his first midterm. Barack Obama, over 40. Uh, you know, even Lyndon Johnson uh, uh, lost dozens and dozens of seats in his first midterm at the height of his power. And it was looking like Democrats might lose like five, maybe 10. Most of their stars survived. They picked up a couple of governorships. Uh, I mean, it's really unexpected. So uh, why is that? To answer your question, I, I, I think uh, uh, voters looked at Democrats and said, like, I'm not satisfied with the state of affairs, but I'm also not very happy with the alternative. And abortion did play a role in this. Uh, youth turnout was extraordinary, much higher than usual uh, uh, midterm uh, turnout for young people, I think 18 to 24. They helped Democrats get across the finish line in a number of races. Um, so, uh, and and, and another, another factor is the, sort of the MAGA candidates, the pro-Donald Trump candidates. Mm -hmm. They did very poorly. Uh, you, you just take a look at the state of Georgia as one example, and there are a few in the country. Um, uh, you had a, a Trump nemesis running for the Republicans, 
on the gubernatorial ticket, Brian Kemp. Remember, he's the one who, who helped uh, prevent Trump from trying to overturn the election in Georgia. He certified the, the uh, 2020 result. Trump hates him for that. Well, he did relatively well last night. He did very well, as a matter of fact. He won re-election, beat Stacey Abrams. On the same ticket, you had Herschel Walker, uh, uh, you know, one of these candidates that Trump selected. And Trump picked these candidates largely because of uh, fealty to him. They, he basically uh, chose people who would assuage his own ego in, in backing up his 2020 election narrative. Uh, Herschel Walker may lose. We're going to find that out <clears throat> either today or in the coming weeks. There could be a, a runoff in Georgia. But the, the basic uh, takeaway there is he ran way behind uh, 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 Brian Kemp. And it happened in a few different places. So this is why a lot of Republicans today are upset. At, uh, and, they're, and, and they're saying that Donald Trump has a history of leading us uh, uh, to dead ends. Uh, that, and, and so you're, you're looking at, uh, at this result and saying, okay, so what happened here? Democrats were up against a lot of headwinds, economic headwinds, historical headwinds, and they lost, but not by much. And the reason they didn't lose by much is, again, young people showed up because of uh, a, a displeasure with, uh, with the uh, Roe versus Wade decision uh, and with the Republican Party. And, uh, the, you know, the, 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 there, are, there is a critical mass of Republican mm -hmm. voters in this country who don't like the Trump-style candidates. And they're, you know, two, three, four, five percent who'll just flip to the Democrats or the Independent or just not, not show up and vote at all. And that made a difference in a few races. So a couple of things. As you were speaking about Georgia and literally saying we may not know until, uh, you know, a couple of weeks, uh, reports coming out on the wires from a Georgia election official. Here's the quote, Alex. Safe to say there will be a runoff on December the 6th. So that is between Herschel Walker and Raphael Warnock. So December the 6th before we know what happens in that crucial Senate race. But on the point you made, too, about Donald Trump, conservatives this morning uh, on networks here and in, throughout the United States, even on Fox News, saying that Trump has never been weaker and looking to him really as, as having to absorb some of the blame. So how does that all figure, do you think, for, for right now for the party? as it takes a look at itself and, and also building toward 2024. Yeah, so I was just looking down at my phone here. There's a, a, a New York Times, uh, uh, sorry, a New York Post uh, front page. And this is Donald Trump's favorite newspaper uh, in New York. And it, it basically has a picture of Ron DeSantis that says the future. All right. And this is Donald Trump's. This is his favorite tabloid in New York City. Uh, it, and that tells you a little bit about the mood in the Republican Party right now. Uh, certainly from the, you know, not from the, the grassroots, um, you know, MAGA base, but from people in positions of power in Washington and New York and elsewhere saying, uh, Donald Trump is, is, is toxic to a certain number of Americans and costs us uh, uh, seats. He, he, he may have cost us the Senate in 2020. Uh, he, he may cost us the Senate again in 2022. Uh, he prevented us from winning uh, some House seats we could have won. And, and uh, you know, I think it'll be interesting to see how many Republicans take this off ramp right now. Uh, you know, a lot of Republicans who don't like Donald Trump uh, you know, hold their fire because they're afraid of, of getting blowback from, from you know, the, the, the rank and file, from the grassroots. You see the people who voted to impeach Trump uh, two years ago, uh, sorry, last year, uh, were mostly wiped out in, in primaries this year. Uh, so it's, it's very risky for a Republican to speak ill of Donald Trump. But this may be the opportunity. And, and uh, you know, you've had Republicans say he's too extreme. He's unstable. Uh, he's a threat to democracy. None of that works. Just ask Liz Cheney. Right. That does not work. But what could potentially work and what we're going to see in the next few days, whether people try deploy this line of argument, um, what could potentially work is the argument saying he is a loser. He lo he won one election in 2016, thanks partly to a letter from James Comey and the fact that it would have been the third Democratic term. And he's lost everything since. And every time he gets on the ballot or gets involved in a race, we tend to do worse than when he's not involved. And so that might be a more potent argument for Republicans who, who, who are, have been wavering on Trump than everything we've heard so far, including the moral arguments we've heard from Liz Cheney and others. Come back any time, Alex. I love our conversations, and I appreciate uh, the insight you bring. I'll just direct everybody watching to uh, your latest analysis in terms of the midterm setbacks for uh, Republicans, but also for Democrats, and also the things that Alex thinks could change after these midterms. Lots of that analysis online at cbcnews.ca. Alex Panetta, thank you so much, as always. Thank you.